But first, I may hate the Philadelphia Eagles with a passion. Dating back to my days formerly as a Cowboys fan, as a Dak Prescott fan, I still hate Philadelphia. And uh, not in a sports sense. I don't actually hate the people of Philadelphia, although they'd certainly get on my last nerves. Uh, and I also dislike Philadelphia. You know why? Because they happen to be in-state rivals with my Pittsburgh Steelers. That, and again, they're one of the most obnoxious and horrendous and uh, just bad fan bases out there in the world of sports. But I will say this. I can't let... And one of the few things I try not to do on this show is let my love of something or my hate for something, both in a sports context, of course, blind me from what the truth is. I'm no journalist, not going to pretend to be, but I try to be honest. That's the goal in this show. Give my honest, objective opinions. Philadelphia, I've said this for probably a year on my show, and I, and I strongly believe it to be true. I think they're the one of the most well-run organizations in professional sports. I really do. Jeffrey Laurie, their owner, is fantastic. Stays out the way. He's like, you know what? I'm going to manage the business side of Philadelphia. And he does a great job of that. Marketing, you know, it's not as good as, say, the Cowboys or necessarily like the Patriots or teams like that. Does a heck of a job marketing the Philadelphia Eagles product. Howie Roseman, we just saw literally hours ago trading for Kevin Beinerd of the Tennessee Titans to shore up that secondary. I absolutely, positively Love the move for Philadelphia, uh, getting one of the best players at that position, adding it to to what's was kind of a secondary that I still you know kind of have couple questions about, but they address some of that. Uh, Howie Rosen is a brilliant general manager, and uh, listen, let's be honest, uh, Nick Sirianni is a pretty good coach. And what I love about Nick Sirianni, then I'll get into Philadelphia's performance last night against against Miami. Nick Sirianni is a guy that first season in the NFL, the Eagles are three and six, and he's like, uh, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going to give the play calling duties to Shane Steichen. Eagles took off that year, made the playoffs. Next year, almost won the Super Bowl. Now Shane Steichen's gone. You saw this offense deal with a little bit of an identity crisis. What are they? You had guys like A.J. Brown, who up until last night, and he extended the streak last night, had four straight games of 125 yards or more. You also had a running game that was that was pounding the NFL every game outside of last week against the Jets. And that's really what I love about Philadelphia. Not again, I don't like the Eagles. I root against the Eagles basically every week unless they I pick them, obviously, is that there's a there's a mix of old school football and new school football that Philadelphia is. They don't go all in on one side or the other. Very unlike the Miami Dolphins team they played last night. And I still I still think Miami is a contender in the AFC. I really do. Uh, they need to shore up that defense. They'll get Jalen Ramsey back. They'll get... Uh, They'll get uh, Xavier Howard back uh, soon enough from injury. Both of those guys are hurt. They'll get some of their offensive linemen back. But Miami is, and it's not a bad thing. I mean, I, I'm, I've always been a believer of, of evolving with the times. Don't say stuck in your ways. You know, it's like I was saying about analytics and baseball, right? You, you, you use analytics. You don't go all in on analytics. You don't say analytics are going to drive every single decision we make. But you're also, if you if you totally distance yourself from analytics, you kind of sound like a crusty old manager who's just kind of behind the times, right? There's a healthy medium and any, anything in life, but especially in sports. And that's what Philadelphia does with what they have with, with AJ Brown, who was sensational last night, who really did expose the weaknesses in that Dolphin secondary, given the injuries they had. When you have a, a, a Jalen Hurts, more on him uh, a little later on the show, but you have a Jalen Hurts who that fourth down play, uh, the, the, the throw to AJ Brown to the one yard line, when he's rolling out to his right, he he's like breaks a sack. That's one of the best plays I've ever seen Jalen Hurts make. I mean, I don't know if people know how tough of a throw that is. Rolling now, and it's to his strong side, it's to his right side, sure. But basically off his back foot, and that ball has to be absolutely perfect on A.J. Brown. Hit him right in the hands, which it did. Initially, it was, it was thought to be a touchdown. Uh, it ended up getting called back because he was down at the one-yard line. Philadelphia still scored there. Uh, but you have an A.J. Brown goes for a buck 37. You also have a Philadelphia Eagles running game that's still kind of finding its way a little bit. But DeAndre Swift, I like the fact that they committed to him a little bit more than they have. Certainly last week against the Jets when they only got 10 carries. He got 15 carries. Jalen Hurts at 11. And Kenneth Gainwell, who had a touchdown run, uh, had eight carries. But Philadelphia is a mix between old and new. It's what I love. It's what I love about San Francisco. It's what I love to a lesser degree, but Kansas City. Kansas City can run the football on you. We saw that in the Super Bowl against Philadelphia. It's what Cincinnati does well. Uh, so I, I think it's more on Buffalo later, but Buffalo's tried to shift to that, and it's just really not in their identity it's to, to do so. And frankly, it's not really in their personnel to do so. Again, more of the Bills later. But I just love that Philadelphia is good at playing the healthy medium. You know what I'm saying? And it's you say, well, what about the old school football? It's not just running the ball because a lot of teams do that. It's the 
the the the brotherly shove, which it's it's probably the most polarizing. <laughs> it's probably the most polarizing play in all of sports, certainly in the NFL. It's like the, you have people that are all for it, and you have people who absolutely hate it, think it's going to get outlawed. My guess it is it's probably going to get outlawed at some point or another. However. You had the head coach at the game, Nick Sirianni, saying, hey, they can't do as well as us. Can't stop it. Don't like it. Try and stop us. And frankly put, that's a quarterback sneak that doesn't get you a yard, yard and a half, half yard if the case calls for it. No, they can get three, four yards of that thing. Literally. When you have Jason Kelsey, when you have Lane Johnson, when you have those excellent interior offensive linemen, when you have Jalen Hurts who could squat 600 pounds, when you have some of these big running backs filled up, he has to push, push forward, push Jalen Hurts forward. It's hard to stop. And I think there is a little bit, just a little bit of hypocrisy behind people who say, you know, we don't like this play. It's bad for football or it's it's not aesthetically pleasing. It's not aesthetically pleasing. I agree with that. It's, it's not, I mean, the Dolphins are on their A game are much prettier to watch. Again, I'll get into Miami in a second as well. But what I love about uh, this is a little bit of hypocrisy in terms of, folks say, oh, they don't like how the NFL soft or it's buddy, buddy, the whole bit, right? The NFL softened up, which I'm all in favor of rule changes. Anything to keep players safe, I'm for it. But you hate the brotherly shove. You hate the tush push. Whatever you want to call it. You don't like that play. It reminds me a little bit of how everybody bags on the NBA. Oh, my God, it's so soft, and the players all like each other. But then you hate Draymond Green. Like, be consistent. Be one way or be the other. Uh, so, I listen, I, I was of the mindset, uh, you know, early this season or late last season, because Philadelphia ran this play a ton last season, that eh, it's not it's not great for the, for the television product. But it's also, in a certain sense, like, Philadelphia's kind of head of the league in terms of the personnel they've, they've employed to run this play to perfection. I mean, it's very, not to, not to reference my Golden State Warriors again, but there was a time about seven, eight years ago where it's like, oh my God, I think Golden State broke the game. Like, these people can't stop it. But once the league caught up, Golden State had to adjust. Other teams won championships. Eventually, other teams, we think, will catch up if this play is an outlaw, which I'm not really sure how you can outlaw it. Uh, I guess just however many people you have in the backfield, whatever the case may be. But Philadelphia has embraced what makes them great. I mean, I said this after they they beat Minnesota. It was kind of close, kind of chippy uh, in a game that probably shouldn't have been as such. We see now the Vikings are 2-4 and four and kind of in shambles right now. Philadelphia, obviously, amongst the contenders in the NFC. But that's what I, I respect that a lot about the Eagles, is that they know who they are. And they're not going to deviate from that. There's a lot of good teams. That can't say that. I mean, what what the heck is Buffalo? What is Dallas on some occasion? Philadelphia knows who they are. Props to them. And uh, again, they combined a mix of old school football and new school football and developed this healthy medium, drafted players that fit both. I mean, it's crazy. They have, I don't know if anybody's seen this. I saw this today. They have seven, they've drafted seven defensive linemen in the first round. Seven other dip, defensive linemen. Again, most plays, it's four defensive linemen on the field. If you're up to seven in the first round, they've gone all in on that aspect of their defense. By the way, they've drafted well and, 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 and developed offensive lines well. So, you know, organizations that have a sense of who they are but also can simultaneously adjust to the times, those are the organizations that win in sports, and those are certainly the organizations that win in the National Football League, and Philadelphia is doing just that. Uh, do I think they're the NFC favorite today? I know, listen, overreaction Monday. It's it's the it's the thing in, in the NFL. It's the thing in, in professional sports. Uh, but you, you, you see everybody's, oh, my God, the Eagles are the favorites today. Well, I mean, San Francisco didn't exactly just go anywhere. Detroit got embarrassed more on them later. I still think Dallas is in that mix. Uh, so let, let's, let's not – Let's not overreact too much. If you already believe Philadelphia is the favorite to begin with, then that's that's one thing. But if we're just going to go week to week, week to week, well, who's the favorite and who's not? So uh, Philadelphia is certainly in the discussion, though. There's no question about that. And I said about the Eagles coming into this game, and I did pick Philadelphia to win because I thought they matched up better with, with Miami, uh, in large part due to their physicality. But I said coming into this one is that two months from now, I think I said December, was it December 18th? Of this year, we'll know exactly who the Philadelphia Eagles are in terms of contending for championships. Because that stretch we talked about on carving it up like that, that upcoming eight game stretch, and they got one of the games out of the way. They won one of their games, so props to them. Again, I, I picked them to win. They were favored to win, but hats off to them for doing what they did offensively and defensively. Uh, but 
that seven, eight game stretch for Philadelphia was brutal, right? Because you had uh, Miami, we know the high flying offense that they have. And I thought Miami would be more, uh, you know, have a better offensive showing only scoring 10 points as an offense. The defense got seven points in the pick six off Hertz. Uh, but then you got at Washington, who's kind of mediocre as we saw yesterday, getting losing to the Tyrod Taylor led giants. But at the same time, Washington's given Philadelphia problems the last two years. But then you got Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo, Niners, Dallas, Seahawks. Uh, and then he finished through three games against pr- three bad teams, to one of them twice, and then the Giants and the Cardinals. So and that last three-game stretch will be, be good for the Eagles to kind of get healthy and, and get right before the playoffs uh, start. But took care of one of them. And I said, if they get out of this with a 6-2 and two record, hey, that they they are. I'm all in on Philadelphia in terms of their ability to contend. Not that I wasn't before the season, but especially uh, now, because we, we, we know they kind of weren't tested last year. And the great quarterbacks they did play that were in rainstorms, a.k.a. that game against Trevor Lawrence, uh, they got shredded. I mean, Dak Prescott hung 40 on that defense. I mean, if they played any quarterback of competence, they got they, they got it handed to him. So, but good, good for the Eagles for getting this W. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.